Hello again, and welcome back to Wingot Plays Nomi Factory. It, since the last episode, I've gone and created the logic processes and engineering processes. They're pretty much exactly the same as the calculation processes, except instead of using these set of quartz plates, they instead use gold or diamonds and the different inscribing press. Otherwise, pretty much exactly the same. So I've made four of each of those. And this has allowed us to get to the point where we can make ME interfaces. ME interfaces, as I mentioned before, allow applied energistics to interact with things outside of the applied energistics system. So let's look at creating one. ME interface requires a, some M, an MV machine hole. We've already made six of those. We're, we're fine there. A robot arm. Okay, we'll have to look into that. Five aluminium plates, which we can get that crafting. For now, let's just do 10 so that we can work on making two interfaces but I'll need to get some more aluminium. In fact, let's get some more aluminium cooking while we go in here. And we'll grab out that energetic alloy. And then the interface also needs this formation core and this annihilation core. Those are made using logic processes and their respective either certus quartz or nether quartz and some fluix dust. Pretty easy. Let's tell the system to make that. Apparently there is fluix dust already in the system here. It's grabbed one of those logic processes out of our inventory and allowed us to make a formation core there. If we, let's make four. Yes, we're going to only going to be able to make two interfaces, but I'll make more later. And then here we can grab annihilation cores, which uses the last of our logic processes there. Robot arm, let's take a look what we've got access to. Let's see, we have electric motors and electric pistons in the system already here. If we take a look over here where we were making, we, okay, so we have not made a robot arm before. In that case, let's pop back in here, put this stuff away and robot arm, we have, we need two aluminium rods and we need some copper cables. We've got some copper wire here. We can actually make, if we just go like this, we can just make some copper cables using the plastic sheets and copper wires that are already in the applied energistic system. This is why the crafting terminal is so, so strong. And it gives you a good clue as to what you're missing as well. As I said, we need some aluminium rods. So let's just craft up 16 of those here in the lathe and we'll grab those plates while we're here. Soon as we've got four, that'll be enough because we only need two to complete that robot arm. And then we've got everything we need to make our first ME interface. If we grab these additional aluminium rods throw them into the system, we should be able to make a second robot arm and a second ME interface. Perfect. Now, one thing I have been talking about repeatedly is the ability to use st a storage bus on those drawers over there. So if we take a quick look here, a storage bus is just an interface and one of those electric pistons. We've got both of those. So let's just grab a little bit of Fluix cable, just because I'm not 100% what's already set up over here, because I don't remember. Oh, okay, so we've got an ME conduit there. If we put this storage bus on the back of here, and in fact, let's increase the priority as well, so that anything that can be stored in here will be stored in here. And then we can just put a piece of Fluix cable to connect it to the ME conduit that we've got 
running alongside our item conduit and power conduits down there under the base. At that point, everything that is in these storage drawers, such as, let's say, these hellish matters and terrestrial matters, extraterrestrial matters, are now available in our apply logistic system. Our 1,345 gold ingots right here in the straw, now available to the applied energistic system, which means we won't have to keep running over here to the drawers in order to access things when we're crafting in our applied logistics. Again, very cool. But let's say over here, we've got these aluminium ingots being made. We, what if we want to just automatically pull those into our apply logistics system? Well, if we connect here our an interface, let's just go across the top here. This isn't going to be a permanent connection, so there we go. This interface here is now part of that system. Let's say we want, so we know that the system has rice bread in it. If we click there, that will take rice bread from our applied logistic system here, which has 50 more, and expose it here in that interface. At that point, we could pull that out of the system using conduits and such, and put it into other locations. We can also take it out manually, and it'll just restock. And then if we take, at that point, we've taken out all of what this system has. But if we go the other way around, let's put these engineering processes into these slots here. You see they disappeared. And these are annihilation cores and formation cores. And if we go have a look in our applied logistics system, that's where they wound up. So anything that you put into the applied logistics system through an interface will actually go into the applied logistics system. And so what we can do is we can put an item conduit right here. Saying that it wants to take everything that this blast furnace makes and extract it straight into that ME interface. At that point, this aluminium gets pulled out and goes straight in to our applied logistics system. Very cool. And so now we have access to our storage drawers over there and we can interface with other machines. Now the last thing that I wanna do is I want to get access to auto crafting. But to do that, we're going to need to make crafting units first and we're going to have to go through the process to make plastic sheets which is going to require ethylene and polyethylene, which means we're going to have to fix up that system that I made last time. In order to do that, I'm going to make a MV chemical reactor to replace that LV machine that wasn't working. And then I'll see you in just a moment. And with that, we have an advanced chemical reactor, which I've connected up to a CEF on its own power line. I still need to actually connect the CEF to the power line, but it's got my 90 million RF flux capacitor sitting in it, so it's providing plenty of power for the time being. And I've got extra vibrant alloy being made here so that we can make energy conduit so that we can make more of this vibrant alloy energy conduit. Perfect. And at that point, we'll be able to provide that with actual power instead of just the battery of power. But in the time being, we have sugarcane goes in and makes biomass. Biomass is then converted into ethanol. What did I just do? I just put a energy conduit in the middle of this, I think. 
let's just delete the whole thing. Oh, there we go. We got the energy contract. Perfect. Now, here we want to insert the ethanol into the advanced chemical reactor. Oh. So, ethanol. That's allowed to come in. We also want to put in sulfuric acid into the chemical reactor. There's quite a few different types, but that one looks like it's the right one. And then if we set that to insert, there we go, we're getting sulfuric acid and we got the ethanol. And then this one here gets the ethylene plus air in order to make polyethylene. So we need to set this one here to accept the ethylene. Which is there. At which point that should pull out this ethylene if we just tell it to extract. There we go. And we're now getting polyethylene. And then that polyethylene can be used in a fluid solidifier to make ingots or it can be used in our assembler to make diodes and transistors and SMDs but the one we were working towards was being able to make MB machine holes without having to make without having to do those processes manually so now instead of this process which required Oh, that's HV. Now, now, instead of this process, which required the extra metal plates plus a consumable item, we are now able to make the MV machine casings and the MV machine holes in the assembler using just this polyethylene. I swear there was something else that I saw a minute ago that I needed the polyethylene for. I was trying to make something else. Polyethylene sheets are used to make... Oh, we will need polyethylene sheets anyway to make this blank pattern. So... Yeah, unless it was the capacitor which I was looking at, which can be made with aluminium foil and polyethylene, because I was making a whole lot more electric circuits. Otherwise, I can't see anything here that would have been obvious that I was trying to make that uses polyethylene. But we've got that system set up. We just need to put in sulfur dust into here, which currently we're getting from mining it, but we can also get it from these blazers that we've got. And so sulfur dust is renewable. Sugar is completely renewable. All we need to do is feed it in currently manually. Grab another stack and shove that in there. Perfect. And lastly, now that we've got polyethylene being made, if we grab a bucket of that, I don't even see where that went. There we go, polyethylene. We have now completed that quest, which was to make polyethylene. Cool. So now plastic sheets from polyethylene sheets use, use a, a fluid solidifier and a plate mold. So here we've already got, no, we don't, we need a plate mold, which is just some steel plates. So if we grab four steel plates, which we've already got here, and then craft those. Uh, wait. What did it say? It said we needed a plate mold. Yes, a plate mold. So we need an empty plate 
and then we need to convert that into a plate mold. Perfect. Now though, that plate mold here, plus a bucket of polyethylene, may leave some spare polyethylene that we'll need to figure out what to do with. But there we go, we've got some polyethylene sheets. Plastic sheets are done. And that was a requirement to make the Applied Energistics Auto Crafting. So again, we're a step closer. That said, I, at this point, will take a look and see what we want to do next. I think we're probably going to want to try to um, progress just a bit further in Applied Energistics, see if we can actually get to this auto crafting this episode. But I'll have to take a look into the steps. I'll see you in just a moment. And during the cut I've made, I've gone and processed up a whole lot of silicon, diamonds, gold and certus quartz in order to make our various processes that we're going to need and a quarter stack of each eight engineering processes but we don't tend to need those anywhere near as much at the level that we're currently at. And then the poly, I've gone and used the fluid solidifier to convert all of that polyethylene that was sitting here into more than a stack of polyethylene sheets. So I think I should have everything that we're going to need to progress through to getting a bit of crafting up and running. To start with, we're going to need a crafting unit. We need at least one of these. Well, in fact, we need to upgrade that so that it is a crafting storage, which this is basically the um, computer that, that, that does the crafting job. In order to do that though, we're going to need to make another one of these 1K ME storage cells, which is pretty easy, but it looks like we're lacking on the red alloy plates. So let's just craft up half a stack of those. And then I'll just Oh, I didn't really, I forgot that I had those Certus Quartz there processing. So we'll put these Certus Quartz plates into the hopper here, put them into the side one at a time. It then processes and makes our circuits there, which is much more convenient than having to do that process manually. Then if we grab these red alloy, there we go. 1K ME storage cell, which will allow us to make the 1K crafting storage which if we connected that to the system, it doesn't do anything in and of itself. But what it does is it allows us for, for us to actually order crafting jobs to be done. But to do that, we're going to need to actually teach it at least one recipe. So we're going to need some formation cores here. We're going to need some annihilation cores and I did notice we just ran out of fluix dust. And we're going to need one of these crafters. The crafter is from Ender IO, and it needs an iron gear and two grains of infinity for each of these infinity biometal gears. I think we've made a few of them already. So let's just make two of these. Maybe if we just pop into here, we can put in the gear recipe and that'll make those two gears. Now the next step is we also are going to need one of these industrial machine chassis, which is again, two grains of infinity and the simple machine chassis, which is just some iron plates, iron bars, grain of infinity. Very easy to do. While that's cooking up there, let's make this. We're short on iron bars. Let's... Oh, right. Iron bars are made with iron rods instead of iron. So let's just go make a whole stack of iron bars here in the lathe. I've got the iron gears. Iron gears plus grains of infinity make the bimetal. Infinity bimetal gear. And over here, six iron rods will be enough. Perfect. For us to be able to make the iron bars, but we'll also need 
a range which isn't in the system. I've got one here, so if we just put that there, we can make eight iron bars, which should be enough for what we're trying to do at the moment. There we go, simple machine chassis. And then the simple machine chassis goes with two grains of infinity. In the alloy smelter. We'll grab these two infinity by metal. We'll grab out that steel that I processed before. And the chassis should show up here as well. It definitely ran, there you go. Perfect. And then those, the only thing we're missing, we need a compressed crafting table, which we're going to need to make some crafting tables. Okay, let's make a few stacks of wood. And then a stack of crafting tables and finally a compressed crafting table. And then the last thing it's going to need is one more of these resonating redstone crystals, which is just a block of redstone. Let's just make a whole stack of that. We only need the one for now. And a ender pearl. Oh, and an ender shard. Let's grab one ender pearl and eight redstone blocks. And then we can make an ender shard using just that ender pearl. Yep. Awesome. And then those together will make the resonating redstone gem that we're missing. There we go. And that can go in here to make the crafter. And then the crafter is needed to make the molecular assembler. Perfect. Now, the molecular assembler will just put it over here for now. So, if I, we've got an ME interface here. I've made a couple of spares. And we can put the molecular assembler next to the ME interface. That ME interface, if I put a pattern in here, it'll be able to craft using this molecular assembler. But, we to do that, we're first going to need to make a blank pattern which we've got almost everything we need. We just need a processing array. Okay, so we need an electronic processor array, which needs tin, aluminum plate, integrated circuits, I think is new, electronic processors, resistors, electron wire, and capacitor. Integrated circuits are made using a cutting saw and integrated circuit wafers with water. Okay, and those are made using a precision laser engraver, silicon wafers, and a red lens. And so it looks like we're going to have to go down a bit of a rabbit hole to make this electronic processing array, which will allow us to make this blank pattern. This blank pattern is what we use to encode the recipes that Applied Energistics will then use to be able to craft things. So let's have a quick look here. I'm in the wrong chapter. So I made a crafting unit. Maybe I never took it out of the Applied Energistics system. So let's make another one. There we go. And that should finish that. We've made but we can't make the pattern terminal until we do this. And so this is going to need that blank pattern. And it looks like there's nothing else in the way of making that blank pattern. Recipes encoded with substitutions on, yep, that's normal. Okay, so I'm going to make these extra couple of machines and I'll be back with you in just a moment. And I now think I've got everything that we are going to need. 
So in order to get started, we to make the integrated circuit wafer, we need this red lens. The red lens can be made in an autoclave with basically any of the red gems plus some water. I've got an autoclave set up here that's already running on pure water. So all I have to do, throw in that ruby, which will get us our red lens for the uh, precision laser machine. Over here, we've made the precision laser engraver and the cutting machine. So we can put that into there and we're going to need a silicon wafer. Now to make a silicon wafer, we're going to need a silicon ball and a silicon ball can be made in a blast furnace over five minutes by putting half a stack of silicon dust and a tiny pile of gallium dust into the blast furnace. So if we grab this gallium here, we'll grab two and a stack of silicon dust and throw both of those into the blast furnace, which may require us to temporarily remove all of this aluminium that we've got being processed. And then we'll just see when that hits 100% what it's going to pick up next. I assume it just picked up aluminium, but, oh, I see. It's The reason I didn't see the aluminium go down is because it's pulling it straight out of this chest. If we turn that off so that it's no longer pulling out and remove this aluminium, that will force it into processing what we want it to. As soon as that finishes, it should grab, there you go, half a stack and the tiny pile of gallium dust. Meanwhile, I'm just quickly going to also grab some more silicon dust, another two pieces of gallium dust, There we go. And that will allow us to make four of these silicon balls in total. Perfect. Now that is going to take quite a long time. As I said, it's going to take five minutes to do a single run. And at the end of that, it will have produced a single silicon ball. That single silicon ball can then go into the cutting saw to make 16 silicon wafers. So the amount we've put into here will be enough to make a full stack of silicon wafers. Over here, we've got the cutting saw, the cutting machine, with an infinite water source on top of it because it, does, it doesn't seem to have a high water demand. And at the moment, at least, it, it'll just be running manually anyway. And so we'll just put in a silicon ball and it will become that silicon. We might as well even configure it so that, I'm just wondering, there's our precision lens there's our silicon ball, silicon wafers. So it's actually going to be beneficial to grab some silicon wafers. So let's hold off for the time being. And it looks like in order to actually get these unlocked, we're going to need to make an NG input hatch, which I'll look at doing later on. But I'll hold off setting that up to being automatic and I think I'm going to pause while we wait on this to finish. And here we go. There, done. Now that will have made a silicon ball, which automatically will have been imported into our Apple Logistics system. And if we go there, here, perfect. Silicon ball. Done. Now that goes into our advanced cutting machine which seems to run fairly quick and makes 16 silicon wafers. Perfect. And then those 16 silicon wafers can go into our advanced precision laser engraver, which does look like it's going to take a while. And it's going to make, there you go, 45 seconds. Although it can be sped up by using different, and you get better quantities by using different types of wafers. But in the meantime, we're, we're getting our, that does also use a lot more power. But yes, in the meantime, we're getting our first integrated circuit wafer. And that looks like it's close to finished. OK, 
Come on. There it is. And that integrated circuit wafer back going back into the cutting machine then looks like it runs fairly slow. Looks like it's going to be a minute in order to make our integrated circuits here. I, oh, okay. So the difference is the different fluids, all of which you produce the same output, but use decreasing amounts of electricity and run faster. So in time, we might see what we can do. We could probably make distilled water pretty easily, it looks like. But lubricant, I have, won't even really look at at this point. But there we go. We're getting integrated circuit wafers, which are being produced quickly enough, given that over here, yeah, we're still on our second run. But here, there we go, we've got our integrated circuits. Perfect. Now our integrated circuits can go here into our assembling machine. And then what else do we need? We needed some aluminium plates. I think we've got some sitting in here. There we go, 18 of those. That, that's fine. We have capacitors. I don't know if we've got any of those spare. Oops. Let's take out the circuit so that it stops converting our aluminium plates into MV machine casings. And while we're at it, let's make some more aluminium plates. We're going to need some electronic processors. Let's grab four of those for now. We'll do one single processor array is what our goal is at the moment. We've got some resistors here. I think we only need two, yep. And we need some fine electron wire, which we don't currently have, but we should have some electron just sitting there. So let us throw that into the wire mill and get fine electron, uh, normal electron wire, which then can become fine electron wire. Good, and then capacitors. I think we might even have all the components that are needed for the capacitor in the system here. There you go, full stack. We definitely had the components we needed in the system. We'll grab some more aluminium plates. We'll grab this fine electron wire. We might as well grab the last bit here. And we'll come back for those other aluminium plates later, but this should be enough to get it producing. Oh, and it's going to need an ingot of tin melted down. Where's our tin? There. Perfect. And then that will make our first, realistically, our first eight. Is it fine? Okay, we've got fine electron wires. We've got. Oh, I didn't put the processors in. There you go. Cool, and we'll put this circuit back in and make a few extra machine holes, that's fine. Now, that electronic processor array, that was the last thing we were waiting on in order to make our pattern. If we go here, we can make eight patterns with that one processor array, perfect. And then we also want, we're going to need a pattern terminal to actually create the oh, let's grab not quartz, we need fluix. Uh, cool. As soon as these get made into plates, then we'll be able to make the pattern terminal, and the pattern terminal can be used to encode patterns. There you go. That and that makes a illuminated panel. We're going to need an ME terminal. And then here we go, ME pattern terminal. So if we put that, let's say here, then what we can do, let's say we want to teach the system how to make a crafting table. What 
we can do, well, we don't need to actually look up that recipe. Let's just do this. We can tell it that four oak wood planks becomes a crafting table. Cool. We can also tell the system that in order to get oak wood planks, it needs to just put in a rubber plank to get four. That's jungle wood. Let's change this over. There you go. One oak wood to get four oak wood planks. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, if we put those into this um, interface that's facing that molecular assembler, we can then, let's say that we need crafting tables. We've got 55 in the system, but let's take those out. And you can see now it says craft there. If we tell it, I want you to make 10 crafting tables, it will go, okay, we've only got 15 oak wood planks available, so we need to craft another 28. So I'm going to use seven oak wood to craft those. And then it's going to use all of that, those oak wood planks to craft these 10 crafting tables. We hit start and you can see it processing away in this molecular assembler, making the oak wood planks and the crafting tables until it finishes making our 10 crafting tables. Awesome. Now with this, we can automate every single normal crafting table recipe. Everything that you could make in this grid here can now be made automatically. I'm going to spend some time getting lots of crafting table recipes crafted up, uh, set up in these interfaces so that we can automatically make a lot of the basic components. And then we'll worry about automatically making things that need all these machines so we don't have to keep running backwards and forwards. But I'm going to do all of that between episodes. Stay happy and healthy, and I hope to see you in the next one.